Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Miriam Barry. I'm from Amrit Pharma in Ireland. And um, thank you very much to Deborah today, to Ben and Caroline and everybody for having me and welcoming me here today. The most important thing about this slide is that I'm not a scientist. <laughs> I'm the clinical project manager in Amrit. Um, and while there are some scientific slides in this, I'll do my best to explain them. And uh, any questions you might have, I can take back to our in-house scientists. So basically, Amrit, are, uh, they're a new pharmaceutical company, a startup, although they're probably about maybe four years in business now. Their focus is on rare and orphan disease. And uh, in terms of EB, we have a phase three clinical trial running. It's the largest clinical trial in EB in phase three currently or ever being run, I think, at this stage. Um, and they're also committed to acquiring and developing medicines to treat patients with rare and orphan diseases um, in other fields besides EB. Um, I'm also going to speak briefly about a product we have called AP103, uh, which is new, and we'll get onto that at the end. So, Oleogel S10, which we're calling AP101 in our research uh, study, is targeting uh, EB. What is it? It's a formulation um, made from betulin mainly, and um, the delivery mechanism in the gel is mainly sunflower oil. It's applied topically to EB wounds, and uh, the aim is to treat DEB and JEB. It's a phase three study, as I said, and the proposed mode of action is the inflammatory modulation, um, keratinocyte differentiation and migration. So this is just a brief overview of where we're getting the product from, where it comes. It's a very natural product. It's very simple. It's coming from the birch bark. Um, and then you can see all the photographs just zoom in. And at the end there, it is uh, in those kind of 25 mil sized tubes and in the trial they are for single use. So as I said it's global and this just gives an indication as to where the study is currently open. Uh, a lot of the European countries, Russia, Australia, uh, were open in the US and Argentina, Chile, Colombia and Brazil in South America. So it's, uh, it's a fairly extensive study, can be said. So just to give an overview of, of the study and what happens, it's two phases. So it's double blind, randomized, placebo controlled. So basically that means the patient goes into the study and neither the patient nor the, uh, the doctors or any of the clinical team or indeed ourselves know what treatment any patient is on. Half of the patients will be on the active treatment and half of them will be on placebo. But that's for 90 days. So this is the double blind phase, which is for 90 days. The advantage of this study is that after 90 days and for two years afterwards, all the patients will go into what's called an open arm phase, where all patients will be receiving the active drug. drug. So this just gives an overview of the timelines here. So in January this year, we had uh, halfway through our study, we had a very important milestone. Um, the IDMC, which is an independent data monitoring committee, reviewed our study on blinded. So these are people who are experts in the area of research, dermatology, EB. None of them are involved in our study. None of them have our study open at their clinics around the world. They and only they saw the analysis, the unblinded analysis of half of the patients who are now currently enrolled. They reviewed it and there was three possible outcomes from their review. One was to continue as we are. The second was to stop the study for futility because it wasn't working. And the third option was to continue with an increase in numbers. So the, their recommendation was that we continue um, with a small increase in numbers. Um, so that was in January. In February, then we had a safety analysis, which was conducted by the same independent data monitoring committee. 
and they were looking at the safety um, of the study to date. So all of these markers such as Bechlin levels we were looking at and all sorts of other markers to ensure that the product is safe. And based on that outcome, we are now able to open our study to under four, where we were generally, it was from four onwards. We hope to complete recruitment this year. Top line data uh, is hopefully going to come out this year as well. Um, that will then lead on to things that I won't be involved in, such as market authorization with the EMA, the European Medicines, um, and with the FDA in the US, the Food and Drugs Administration in the US. And we're looking at maybe then 2021 um, and onwards for a commercial product. So, oleogel, what does it do? It influences coagulation and inflammation at the beginning of the wound healing process. Um, it's a pro-inflammatory pro mediators such as cytokines and growth factors are increased, but only transiently increased. That doesn't sustain for a long time. That, that's, so that's over hours, as you can see. Then in the days, it influences regeneration, proliferation, proliferation and the migration of keratinocytes. And then in the weeks to come, tissue remodeling. That's pretty much the same slide, just looked at slightly differently. And this is just to give a description of um, the difference or the similar similarities between partial thickness wounds and EB. Um, Oligel S10 is, uh, is currently marketed in the EMA for partial thickness wounds. Um, and there are some similarities in partial thickness wound and EB wound healing. So the, just the two in the middle, the controlled inflammatory response and the granulation and proliferation of the keratinocytes are what are similar between the partial thickness wound healing and the EB wounds. Again, that just goes into more detail of the inflammatory response, upregulation of the inflammatory mediators, and then again the ker keratinocytes and the promotion of the cell migration. So, the trial. Um, as I said, there is the double blind phase and then there's the open label phase. So all this first part here, there's a screening and enrollment, then the patients are stratified. As I said, half of the patients will be in the active arm and half the patients will be in the placebo arm. But they're also stratified by EB subtype. Um, the patient numbers there, it says 96 over the Oleogel S10 and standard of care and placebo, again, 96. These numbers are now increased to 250 in total. Um, and that just shows the interim analysis there, which is actually complete. The end of the double blind in the blue, that leads into the open label, as I described. Um, there's also the option if patients do have any issues in the double blind phase or adverse events, or they have to finish early in the 90 days, they can go straight into the open label phase if the doctor deems it appropriate. So this is just to recap on what I was talking about a few minutes ago about the interim analysis. This is a statement from our CEO, and uh, this is surrounding the um, interim analysis on the efficacy results. And that's just what Joe had to say about it, but basically what those recommendations were. Um, so we had the press release regarding the interim efficacy of the EASE study, where the analysis had been conducted by an independent committee who recommended that the trial should continue with an increase of 48 patients. And the reason for that increase was to ensure that we had 80% statistical power at the end of the study. The analysis was conducted using the unblinded uh, information, as I explained, and um, it means that we continue to recruit with a modest increase in the size of the study. 
This is the uh, second interim, or not interim, but the IDMC safety analysis. And again, um, Joe prepared our statement for, as for the press release, again, as to how happy we were in Amrit about the safety. And what the IDMC actually said was that um, following the review, they, they recommended to include children under the ages of four. And the reason why it says over 21 days is because our protocol specifically states that the wound should be 21 days or older to enroll in the study. So by default, the baby needs to be 21 days old at least. So this is great news for us. It was really well received in the sites where we are open because a lot of them had patients under the age of four who knew about the study and who were really interested in it. And this has given us the opportunity now to open up the study to those patients. So AP103, this is a very interesting um, development for Amrit that happened last year. Um, AP103 is a genetic therapy that's currently um, Amrit are researching. It was um, acquired from UCD in Dublin, University College Dublin. And um, as Ben had said earlier, uh, the government, Irish government, were awarding grants last year and Amrit were lucky enough to receive a grant for 8 million to help develop AP103 and to get it into the clinical stage. So what is it? It's a gene therapy that's using the platform of a polymer rather than a virus. Um, it's looking at the collagen 7 expression. And uh, our scientists did explain this to me, so I'll see, I'll do the best I can. But um, basically, you can see the little DNA and the highly branched polymer are put together into this polymer complex and it's taken up into the cell. And in the cell, um, the polymer breaks down and the DNA is released and the mechanism of the cell has the ability to take up the DNA and incorporate it into the cell. So there's slides on the uh, right hand side. The first one just shows the control, the negative control. This is, this is RDEB skin. And you can see the line, the junction between the dermis and the epidermis. Um, the second slide shows it says one month on the side, um, and this is after topical application of this AP103, and it's the pink is the amount of collagen 7 that we're looking at. So it's the bottom slide, which is after, I think it says 10 weeks on the, on the side. Um, you can see there's a huge increase on the amount of collagen 7 from the top slide to the bottom slide. So it's very promising. Um, there's been some publications or press releases about AP103 and its findings to date. Um, but what, I think the bottom slide speaks well of it. So AP103 application produced type 7 collagen at levels exceeding previously tested non-viral methods and similar to those following viral vectors. It's treating RDEB cells produce much higher amounts of type 7 collagen than seen in healthy cells, and there's no indication of cellular toxicity was seen mm. after treatment of AP103. It will be a topical treatment as well, and uh, Lara, our clinical scientist who's driving this, informs me it'll be about three years maybe before it gets to clinical, which would be um, fantastic. So I think they have a lot of work to do with their 8 million before we get it into people, which would be great. And that's it from Amrit. Thank you very much for your attention. Happy to take any questions.